back to, back to this one. So why does the frequency of the Ice Age just change from time to time? Why did it seem like two and a half million years ago, 4,000 year cycle switched on, and a million years ago, the 100,000 year cycle suddenly switched on? It doesn't make any sense, right? Because the other planets in the solar system have been affecting the shape of the Earth's orbit for millions of years since the beginning of the solar system. So why is it that we only notice the 100,000 year cycle of eccentricity in the last million years? Any ideas? That's 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 a good uh, that's a good idea. My teacher said it might have something to do with thresholds. So just picture this: before two and a half million years ago, there weren't any year-round glaciations in the northern hemisphere. So some snow would fall in the winter time, but it would all melt away in the summertime. You start again fresh next year. But then about two and a half million years ago, you started to get the first year-round glaciations. So you would accumulate enough snow in the winter time so that it wouldn't melt away in the summertime and you wouldn't start fresh new next season okay so you start to get year-round glaciations and this can affect the mass distribution and heat distribution of the planet okay possible explanation all right other than that uh, it's a real big mystery they don't know what actually caused these very abrupt transitions frequency, although I did hear somebody say it could be related to these geomagnetic reversals, rapid changes in the Earth's magnetic field where the North Pole becomes the South Pole very rapidly, maybe. That could have something to do with it, but we'll just leave it there. Okay, and the 50 cent question. Will the Ice Age return? Not to blast this because it does look like we are in a pattern here, and where's the pattern lead? Well, most scientists say that the Ice Age may return one day, but nobody's exactly sure when. Although, if any of you have seen that movie where the Ice Age comes back overnight and the Statue of Liberty turns into a big icicle, yeah, the day after tomorrow, day after tomorrow, so they're running away from the ice as it chases them down the street. Yeah, it's not gonna happen like that because it's a very gradual. And uh, it's because of the basic, basic thermodynamic properties of water, right? So it's a lot faster to melt the ice than it is to accumulate it. So if the Ice Age does come back, it's going to take many thousands of years to accumulate all the ice again. So feel a little, can you sleep a little bit better at night now? Yeah. Okay, great. Don't worry about it. And another really big question is why do we have ice on the surface of the planet today at all? Because for most of geological history, there hasn't been any ice at the surface. When the dinosaurs roamed the world 100 million years ago, there weren't any polar ice caps. There were tropical rainforests in the polar regions, and the dinosaurs never saw snow even in the deep of winter. So it's kind of a mystery why there wasn't any ice on the surface of the planet then, and why we have glaciers on the surface of the planet today. So, any thoughts on that? So, there's a few different ideas. Some people say it could be related to the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, the amount of water vapor or carbon dioxide could affect the amount of heat being trapped in the atmosphere, and some people say it could be the arrangement of the continents. So, if the continents are arranged differently, then this can affect the heat distribution in different parts of the world. Okay, so in the Cretaceous period, the world is all broken up into a bunch of little continental plates. But 250 million years ago, they were all clustered together in the supercontinent of Pangaea. And when you have a supercontinent, it's a lot more difficult for the ocean currents to distribute heat to all parts of the planet. Okay, so the ocean currents want to bring heat to other parts of the planet, they have to go all the way around the continent to do that, right? Whereas when it's broken up into a lot of little continents, the ocean currents can flow a lot more freely and distribute heat much more uniformly to all parts of the planet. Okay, so at a time when there's kind of a bunch of little tiny continents, you would expect to have a more uniform distribution of heat. Okay, so the climate's a lot more uniform here, whereas here the climate is a lot more zonal. There's a larger latitudinal gradient from the equator to the poles. Does that make sense? 
I could agree with that because I don't think it's causing it any of plenty of the ideas. So yeah, very, very good uh, comment. And then there's another group of back scientists that think that the reason why we have ice on the surface of the planet today and not for most of geological history is because of the solar system's motion in the galaxy over millions of years and uh, maybe this affects climate and the uh, occurrence of ice ages. Well, but we won't get too into that right now. Okay. Okay, so the sun would have been, according to these scientists, closer to the galactic center at a time of maximum eccentricity. So the sun is just really far down in the potential well of the galaxy. So the gravitational potential of the galaxy is sort of like this big funnel. And you can think of the sun as a marble rolling around in this funnel. Yes? Uh, that's what some people say. It was a very extensive glaciation. I'm not sure if it was completely covered in ice. 600 million people. Completely covered. Really? And that's based on the uh, glacial till found at zero degrees paleo latitude, right? Uh huh. Well, I, I would disagree with that. Because if we look at the world today, the North Magnetic Pole and the North Pole are not the same place. Right? And when we do our plate tectonics reconstructions like this, we assume that the North Magnetic Pole is the North Pole. It's not necessarily the case. And that's what I'm going to get into later. Okay, so maybe we'll uh, move on to question six. But maybe I'm just suggesting that maybe they found ice at the magnetic equator, not necessarily the equator, okay? See where I'm going? But it's a really interesting topic, nonetheless. Okay. And a very, very big question. We look back at this map. This is really crazy. Okay, so there's a big continental ice sheet uh, covering Canada all the way down to 40 degrees north latitude. But why aren't there any thick continental ice sheets on Alaska or the Bering Strait? Why is it an exposed land bridge? Uh, hosting herds of mammoths and saber-toothed cats and short-faced bears and camelids and horses and that sort of thing. Why isn't it covered nice? So, and also if you look at um, what the world looked like, if the average temperature of the Earth's surface was 10 degrees colder than it is today, why don't we have large continental ice sheets in the middle of Siberia? I mean, it's colder than this area today, right? So. Why is this area covered in a mi uh, mile thick of ice, and Siberia is free of ice? Okay, so my teacher said that that might have something to do with precipitation patterns, because you have the Bering <coughs> Land Bridge here now is disrupting the water and precipitation from coming, uh, coming through the Land Bridge and depositing snow on Alaska and Siberia. But I also read a very interesting book which suggested that maybe 20,000 years ago, the North Pole might have used to be in Hudson's Bay. So, uh, does that sound pretty crazy? So, uh, it was based on this theory from a Canadian geologist in the 1940s, and he said that at various times in the past, the North Pole hasn't been in the same location. And once in a while, the Earth's crust will shift with respect to the uh, core or the interior of the Earth. Okay, so right now the Earth's magnetic field is produced by convection currents in the liquid outer core. And for most of Earth's history, the crust of the Earth would uh, realign itself with the magnetic field constantly. So for most of Earth's history, the assumption that the North Pole and the North Magnetic Pole are the same is probably true. So in the Cretaceous, there would have been hardly any difference. But he says,